my name is Liz Callen and I'm the culinary educator with SHIP and I'm making this video in collaboration with the Parent Academy. So today we're going to talk about gardening from kitchen scraps and we're going to learn how to plant four super easy things and we're also going to talk about using recycled containers and um, making your own compost tea that you can use to fertilize your plants. So these are all super easy ways that you can garden at home without having to do a lot of shopping and a lot of purchasing. So we're going to start off with my favorite thing, which is scallions. Scallions are so super easy to propagate and grow at home. So when you're cooking with scallions, all you do is you take your scallions and when you're chopping them up, you're going to just cut a little bit more off of the bottom than you normally would. So you're going to cut off maybe about a half an inch of the scallion leaving the root. And that means that it's going to end up looking about like that. And that's it. And then the rest you go ahead and cook with. And every time that I cook with scallions, I basically do this. And I save my little scallions in a dish of water. And I have so many around the house. Look, I have about three here already. And what I do is I put them in the dish of water and I wait until they start to poke up a little bit of green. And once they do that, then I can plant them outside or in a pot. You can also plant them directly in a pot, but I kind of, it's kind of encouraging to see the green start to come up. So once they start to sprout like this, you just take a pot of, of soil and you plant them right in. And this is a good time to talk about the recycled pots that, that are fun to use if you don't want to go out and buy a pot or you don't have the right one for your, for your project. So what you can do is you can use any pot that has, is kind of a dark color so it doesn't let light in and confuse the roots. And you um, fill it with soil, you cut a few slits in the bottom to let the water out so that the roots don't get soggy, and you can plant right into it. So this is our recycled olive oil container that I'm using, and it's got a nice long shape with some depth to it so we can get some roots in there, and I can plant a bunch of scallions in here. So let's go ahead. We're just gonna dig a little hole, and we're gonna stick the scallion right in, just like that. So super easy. And I'm gonna pray, I could probably fit quite a few. They don't get very big. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick about four in here. You just plant them so that a little bit of the of the white and green is sticking above the soil and the roots are down in there. They're not very fussy. There you go, so it can look like this. And the great thing about this project is that you can do this any time of year. You could actually get these scallions sprouting in a sunny window in the winter and you can plant them in a pot like this in the winter, stick them in a sunny window, let them grow a bit, and they'll be a little spindly, but, and then in the springtime, you can just stick them right outside or take your container and put it outside. So this is an all season project. You can do it in the middle of the summer when it's hot. You can do it in the winter, get them started. The scallions are super resilient. They don't, they don't care. And then what will happen is these scallions will grow and they'll make a little bunch of scallions like this as they're growing. And what you do then is you can pick them the same way that we just use the scallions for cooking. You can pick them so that you're cutting right above the soil and leaving about a half an inch or maybe an inch. And then you're going to cook with this part and then this part will grow back and it'll grow more scallions. And then eventually what happens is the scallion will grow, they'll grow all summer, and eventually it will actually shoot up a flower stalk like this. And once the scallion puts up this thick flower stalk, it means that it's done making scallions for the season, but you can still pull up this entire scallion. So in this case, once it makes the flower stalk, it's, it's actually going to be, it wants to make seeds. And so it's done making little baby scallions, but you can use this one too. So you would just pull this scallion right up, go, and you can use this scallion. And then that's the end of that scallion's life. So this, this one, once it has the flower stalk, we can't cut it and save it and plant it again because it's already decided to make seeds. So, so it's kind of done at that point. So that's scallions. That is my absolute favorite kitchen scrap to save and grow. I, 
I, I do it every single time that I, I, I'm using scallions. As long as the scallions have a nice little root, I will chop them and save them just like this. Stick them in water. If you stick them in water, that gives you time to, to figure out when, when and where you're going to actually plant them too. And just stick them in a sunny window. And that's it. Let's take a quick look to see how the scallions are growing out in my garden right now at the beginning of May. These are scallions that I planted about a month ago and they're growing right in my semi-shady flower patch. So you can see that they're doing pretty well. They've only been growing for about a month outside and I planted these outside directly from those little teeny sprouted half-inch scallions right out of the water dish. And when I planted them, it was pretty cold, but they don't mind. They're, they're doing great out here. And here are some scallions that I started last fall, and I just stuck them into the strawberry patch. So you can see that, they, that they've grown through the winter, and they're um, really looking great. They're ready to pick now. So I could just take it, my scissors and, and cut the ones that are ready. And then over here is one of those ones that has the flower um, stalk on it. So that one, we will just pull the whole thing up and eat that. That one isn't going to make any more baby scallions. Before we get started talking about potatoes, let's talk about another recycled container that you can use to plant in. So this is an example of using an actual bag of soil. So finding a, a big container, because a potato does need a, need a big container, it's going to have to fill up this big container with lots more potatoes. So it needs a big container full of excellent soil. But what you could do is buy some light potting soil and just cut the bag open and plant directly into that. It's that easy. This, this bag of soil actually has some leaf mulch from my yard. So if you have um, access to a pile of leaves that's been sitting there for about three years, it actually turns right into soil. And so this is, this is leaf mulch with a little bit of potting soil mixed in. So that's another thing you can do to, to avoid having to go shopping and spending money and being out in the crowds. So you can actually plant directly into leaf compost. All right, so we've got that. Now with the potato, you plant the potato when you see some of the eyes have sprouted. So if you don't have a potato at home that's sprouting, one thing you can do is put a potato into a little plastic bag and kind of loosely seal it and then put it in a sunny window and the eyes will start to sprout and each of those sprouts will turn into a potato plant. So if you want a lot of potatoes, you can cut the potato so that each piece has a nice eye like that. And then what you would do is you would let it sit outside in the sun and seal over for about a day and then you would plant it. Or you can just take a whole potato with lots of sprouting eyes and plant it. And when you plant the potato, you leave a lot of space on top of the pot to add more soil. And you're gonna just make a little hole and stick it down in there, maybe about four inches, cover it up. So there it is, all covered up. And then as it starts to grow, you cover it with more soil. So the potato is going to come up and when it pokes up above the soil, when it gets to be about six inches high, you're going to add more soil and you're just going to mound the soil up around the stem so that there's always just a little bit of stem showing as the potato starts to grow. And that's called hilling the potato. And the reason that we do that is because the potatoes grow off of the bottom of the stem. So the more of the bottom of the stem that you bury, the more potatoes that can grow. And then you're going to put this potato into a super sunny spot. Most vegetables need about six to eight hours of sun minimum, so they really need a very, very sunny spot. The potato plant is not going to do well inside and on a sunny window. It's going to have to be outside in the full sun somewhere. And then also for, for this homemade container, again, we're going to poke little holes so to make sure the extra water can come out and the roots aren't sitting in water and getting soggy. And potatoes prefer kind of late spring weather is their favorite time. So you can plant them in spring and then grow them through the beginning of summer in Virginia. And then once the plants start to flower and die back, you know that your potatoes are ready inside this bag. And then since it's in a, in a container like this, you can just easily harvest it by dumping out the container and finding your potatoes. Of course, you can also plant potatoes out in the garden in excellent fluffy soil 
treat them the same way, and then dig them up with a fork. All right, so let's talk about sweet potatoes now. So with sweet potatoes, you can do two things. You can either stick them in water for very many weeks and let little sprouts emerge, which you can then root in some more water and plant each one to make a sweet potato plant that's gonna make a bunch of sweet potato tubers. This is a long process and, and you have to have a lot of patience and you have to plan ahead. Another thing you can do though is did you know that you can actually eat sweet potato leaves? It's a vegetable they eat a lot in Africa and it's full of, of vitamins and minerals and super, super easy to grow and it makes a beautiful ornamental plant too. So another thing you can do with sweet potatoes is you can just plant the root directly into a big pot of soil. Now sweet potatoes like very, very warm weather. So it, it's just now getting to be time to plant sweet potatoes. So you can plant sweet potatoes around the middle or end of May is good for sweet potatoes. Stick them right into the soil, give them plenty of water, and this sweet potato is gonna grow a mass of leaves, which you can eat raw in salad or you can stir fry. And it also makes a really pretty patio plant. It will grow a couple of smaller tubers in there, but because we planted the whole potato that's, that's full of all of those, those buds that wanna make actual individual plants, it's gonna focus its energy on leaves and it's not gonna plant as many tubers, but it's still gonna be a great, a great plant that you could add to your salad. Now, the last super easy plant that I wanna to talk to you about is ginger. So this is ginger root that I just bought in the grocery store and it will actually grow. This is another warm season crop. So this has to be planted middle of May, end of May, into June, when it's definitely very warm. It's a tropical plant. And it makes another beautiful patio plant. So for ginger, you, you pick another, a big pot, because it's a root that's gonna grow. And you basically just plant the ginger at the very top of the pot and just barely cover it with soil, and then give it lots of sun and lots of water. And it's going to sprout little gingers that look like this little root. And then it's gonna get bigger and it's gonna turn into a really pretty pot. And then it's gonna grow through the warm summer, give it lots of water, tons of sun. And at, in the fall, it will, it doesn't like the cold weather at all. It'll start to die back a little bit. And then you can just dump out your pot and dig up your ginger. And it will have multiplied about four times. So it, it'll create a, a nice patio pot for you and you'll also get to have more ginger at the end of the season. And fresh ginger is so much nicer than the dried out one. Okay, so now I wanna to talk to you about fertilizing our plants. Vegetables require a lot of nutrients. They need lots of really good nutrients in order to actually grow beautiful vegetables. So we can plant into excellent composted soil. We can use composted manure. We can use um, organic store-bought fertilizers or inorganic store-bought fertilizers just to make sure that they're really in some great soil. But another thing we could do is we can make a compost tea and water our plants with it to give them nutrients. So one thing you can do is you can take banana peels and you can put them into water and leave them for two or three days until the water starts to turn kind of dark brown. And then what you do is you'll pour off some of your banana leaf tea and then you're gonna mix it half, half with water. So put as much water in as you have tea. And now you have a little homemade fertilizer, which you can use to water your plants. You can use that on your plants about once a week and give them some nutrients. Another way you can do this is you can use green grass and weeds from your yard. They have tons of nutrients in them that they will release into the water to make a compost tea for you. So what you could do is you could just chop these up with scissors Get them kind of fine, that way you can get more into the jar. We're going to fill a jar with all these green grass and leaves. And you can also use lawn clippings. Lawn clippings are already chopped up. You can get even more in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Fill up a jar, really pack them in there. This is so easy, you can do this every week for your plants. This will create a, a 
gentle fertilizer that has a low amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in it. Perfect for watering your plants. So we pack that in, then we're going to fill it up with water, and then we're going to loosely cover it. The nitrogen is actually volatile, and so we want to cover it so the nitrogen doesn't disappear into the air. And we just leave it for two or three days. All right, so easy. And here is one that I did a couple days ago. So let's see how it's looking. It's pretty good. It's just got some kind of brown color to it. We're going to strain it off. Okay, I actually have to press the water out of this one. There we go. Get all the water pressed out of there. Great. And this is what it looks like. There we go. And we're going to dilute it with some water until it's about half, half of our fertilizer and water. And we're all set. We can use it to water our plants. Go. Here we go. <laughs> now we've made a homemade fertilizer for our plants. Okay, so we can see that it's pretty easy to grow plants at home from kitchen scraps, especially the scallions. You have to try the scallions. Once you try saving your scallion roots and planting them, you'll never go back. You'll always have scallions all year round. We can see that we can make a recycled container. We can even get soil from a leaf, an old leaf pile. And we can make our own compost tea fertilizer too. So these are ways that you can garden without having to spend a lot of money or go out to the store too much and um, have some great results. So have fun with that.